It is a shame exploration requires so much bloodshed. Hey guys, Dantix here, finally back with another Starfield video. I could not be more pumped for this game, it looks like everything we've hoped for. There's far, far too much to cover in one video, so I'm going to specifically dive into combat weapons and mods for this video and break down each individual topic in separate videos. So check below for those and be sure to follow and hit the bell because damn guys, you really don't want to miss my exhaustive coverage. It's by far the most in-depth on the internet. This one covers combat, your options, new weapon skills, modifications, powers, and more. Also, I'm giving away a 3080 and copies of Starfield, so be sure to stick around to find out how to win those. Combat begins at the character creator. Picking a background leads you down a path with some combat-related skills that may influence the direction you take. For example, picking the Cybernesis background will start you with the laser skill, increasing laser weapon effectiveness and making it so that as you use laser weapons, you become better at using them. Don't think Skyrim though. Each skill has a task to complete in order to be eligible to upgrade to the next rank. You can do this by using skill points you gain while leveling up. It might be as simple as killing enemies with a pistol to advance your pistol skill progress. You can also use skill points earned by leveling to buy skills you don't start with as well. You may choose to buy stealth in order to become a sneaky laser wielding half robot or security to make sure no lock can keep you from blasting someone in the face and robbing them blind. And therein is the beauty of a Bethesda RPG. How you approach combat is really up to you and can be different each time you play. If you pick up the Xeno Sociology skill, you can interact with aliens including hostile ones like this hunting thorn mantis. By pressing a button in the scan menu, you can bring up the Xeno social menu and based on the current level of the skill, you'll be able to first pacify, second make them flee, third whip them into a frenzy, and the final rank, control them. Pacify making it so hostile creatures are no longer hostile, flee making them run away from you and your crew, frenzy making them attack their own allies, and control lets you command them like you would a crew member. At this stage, it's unclear if you could adopt the alien creatures and bring them on board with you or along with you into combat like your crew, which I'll discuss in my crew video, but we can always dream. Just look at this cutie. When you consider just how vast and how many handcrafted non No Man's Sky creatures there are, having them help you in combat or pacifying them and avoiding the fight completely might be an extremely viable option. Especially against these demon creatures, I'd rather have this thing on a leash than on my corpse. Another skill you can pick up is the boost pack training within the tech tree. This lets you equip and utilize a jetpack to jump, glide, or even fly around in combat based on the gravity level. You'll see this utilized a bit not only in the new gameplay, but in the older gameplay reveal video. It seems having the high ground is an extreme advantage in Starfield as you can not only rain death down on your enemies, you can drop mines and grenades right where you want them as well as get in places you aren't welcome. Here we see the player attacking pirates on Jemison. Salty isn't needed when you have a boost pack. He flies towards a group on shipping containers, does an air dash and proceeds to glide while aiming down sights. Boost jumping in combat gaining him progress within the boost pack training skill. We'll see more boost jumping later but you don't need to resort to jumping, you could always just walk around the old fashioned way and fall on enemies from the high ground. A skill in the physical tree right at the bottom is Neuro Strikes. It's one of the payoffs of investing so far. It gives your unarmed combat that extra kick, making it so you don't need to use weapons in combat at all. Here we see unarmed combat utilized against a spacer on Mars. Dealing damage is gaining experience for the martial arts skill as well as Neuro Strikes, and it won't be uncommon for you to be gaining experience across multiple skills for the same action. One Punch seemingly doing a One Punch Man level of damage. Here's more fist fighting but in third person. We can see this spacer didn't stand a chance. One Punch dealing more than two thirds of the enemy's health bar indicated by the white bar and seemingly breaking one bar of armor shown with the red. You'll also notice a blue bar draining above the health. It looks like a heartbeat monitor infographic and represents electromagnetic damage, suggesting that these neuro strikes deal a different damage type. What will happen when it's drained is anyone's guess. It could be stuns, it could be non-lethal knockdowns, we'll just have to wait and see. It doesn't matter though, as the player doesn't want to do anything but murder. So in this last clip, we see the One Punch Man almost knock this guy into orbit. Keep in mind we're on Mars here, so the gravity isn't as high. Even so, he oddly flies much further than the others before him, so I'm not sure if this is a case of bad physics or because a skill or ability was used that lowers his mass beforehand. That 
pun was actually not intended. There are hints at special mysterious powers, which I'll cover later. Now, what would a Bethesda RPG be without stealth? You can and should be a creepy stalker. Sneaking through vents, pickpocketing people, stabbing them in the back, why not? By crouching and walking slowly, you enter stealth mode. While you're hidden, enemies won't notice you and you can get by them, deal extra damage to them out of stealth, pickpocket them and more. Here we see the character sneaking around Vola Alpha. You know they're sneaking because of the bar at the top that shows just how hidden you are. The less it's filled, the further from detection you are. You'll see it fluctuate as you make noise or come closer to an enemy's range of vision. In this case, he sneaks behind a Slayton security officer and proceeds to pickpocket. Each item has a chance to be successfully taken without alerting the enemy. In this case, around the 80% for these items. Yes, it seems like you can steal his guns without him noticing, letting you take combat in an advantageous position against stronger enemies. Here the character is channeling their inner xenomorph and creeping through a vent. They come across a hatch, open it, and approach another Slayton security officer with a knife. So even with the stealth option, there are multiple approaches as you can choose to use a vent instead of the front door. You could also avoid combat entirely by being a savvy diplomat or a charming, lovable rogue and pick up the persuasion skill. This starts a persuasion minigame where you're trying to convince the target of something. The green option being the most likely to succeed, but offering the least progress. In this case, six bars are needed to convince Brown Jacket here. Let's be honest though, a lot of people are just going to run and gun. In that case, why not equip something powerful? In this clip, we see the stealth bar no longer has hidden written on it. It's now replaced with danger, which is obviously a warning to your enemies because they're about to be smoked. This ballistic shotgun making short work of those spaces on Mars. Keep in mind that this level 8 spacer has armor and this one doesn't, but it rips through them all the same, granting the player some ballistic skill experience. For a shotgun, you certainly have a lot of ammo, both in reserve and in the magazine or, or the chamber. I don't know how this futuristic shotgun works. Here we have another example of utilizing the boost pack to bypass the high ground defenses of these spaces and drop a landmine on them. This also is the first look at a mag weapon, a new weapon type introduced in Starfield, which we'll go through later. You'll notice that the spacer's pack catches on fire after being shot and explodes in a huge flash of light. It doesn't seem to be close enough to hurt the player though, and don't worry, we'll see this another dozen times at least before the end. Here we see the player dropping a grenade on a pirate brigand on the planet a killer. And speaking of killers, it explodes almost instantly, taking the enemy out in one shot. Considering it seems like there isn't a hard limit on the amount of ammo, mines, and grenades you can carry, this might be a legitimate combat focus. It seems like weight is your only limiting factor here. Next, we have either a rocket launcher or some kind of explosive heavy-based weapon firing at a pirate indoors. You'll also notice that it crits. It was suspected that headshots or striking vulnerable parts would be considered critical strikes, but in this case, the ammo is fired nowhere near the head, so critically striking might be a random chance or based off of a skill. Same deal with this clip, where an explosive shotgun-like weapon crits the pirate brigand. In this clip, the player throws a grenade into a group of pirates and shuts the door, suggesting that cooking the nade in your hand will be great when dropping them from above, but you can do tricky things like this when not cooking it, and there is also nades that explode on impact. Back on Mars, here we see a rifle zooming in and giving us an option to hold our breath. This will stabilize it before taking a shot, in this case against a pirate. At first glance, it looks like the player fires on the head and gets a crit, but taking it slow, you can see it hits the enemy's backpack. It's been shown before, but it's a devastating way to kill and clear out his friends. The player approaches to do the same to his mate and zip, the first enemy's jump pack loses control, shoots him into the air and slams him back down in a very satisfying explosion that takes out both of them. Poetic. So you have a variety of ways to approach combat, but why are you fighting in the first place? Well, one of the things you can do is take on bounties. In this case, one to hunt a beast. If you have the beast hunter background, you'll get a double reward for it. Backgrounds influence missions in the world. In this case, it's profitable to hunt. Their habitat isn't far from here. If you could take care of them for us, we would be in your debt. So your background could give you a reason to fight, 
but your traits can as well. Traits are picked up at the character creator and usually give you some kind of buff or benefit while providing you something that offsets that. I highly recommend checking out my customization and skills video for more information. One such example is the wanted trait, which gives you a damage buff when your health is low, but mercenaries and bounty hunters will be hunting you across the galaxy. Randomly showing up and attacking you, forcing you into combat, this might offset the buff by providing an annoyance, but it could be just what your character needs. More meat for the grinder to improve your skills and more weapons delivered to your door. Maybe you want to be a pirate, which is a good reason to fight as well. Fresh ships to pawn or to scrap. By disabling enemy ships, you can board them. Here we see a player who's just boarded an Ecliptic Stiletto. The Ecliptics aren't too happy about its new owner, so you promptly put down the mutiny. As you're in space, their corpses float around in the cockpit in a very ungrateful manner. In this case, the player approaches a trader Highlander and sends an outboard transmission, picking the piracy option, demanding everything in the cargo hold. Naturally, they don't comply. Let's do this. After a space battle, which you can learn more about in my space combat and ship video, you can board and rob the trader blind. Here's some more footage of the ecliptic stiletto attack. The player swapping out the mag gun for a trusty pistol, which seems to make quick work of the thug. The end goal of this carnage for the lady at Bethesda was to steal his sandwich, which she promptly adds to her growing sandwich hoard in a very Donkey Kong-esque madness. You're also able to join every faction. Why not join the Freestar Collective and live out your bandit or Wild West gunslinger fantasy? Complete, of course, with jewels. Now, I've showed off some weapons already, but let's go through them in detail. There are more weapons and mods in Starfield than any Bethesda game before it, with more detail than ever before. Here we see the menu screen UI, showing several details like the plant you're on and survey status, your ship, skill progress, and finally, the weapons and inventory. In this case, you have a refined Eon equipped. Clicking on your inventory brings up different categories. Weapons, spacesuits, packs, helmets, outfits, throwables, ammo, and aid. You have credits and a mass limit. The refined Eon is physical damage and a stat of 49 and uses the 7.77mm ammo type. This confirms that not all weapons will use the same universal ammo type. You'll need to find specific ammo, meaning some builds might get benefit from having a few different ammo type using weapons in order to stay fully loaded. The gun has the other usual stats, but what is to note is that every weapon has their own maximum mod slots this one being six, so better weapons might be more customizable. Clicking on the weapon category, we see weapons the player has on their person, three of which are favorited, letting them swap to them with a button press. One of which is the Advanced Grendel Rifle, which uses the same ammo type but has eight mod slots. Do note that rounds doesn't suggest there is a max amount of rounds you can carry, but just the amount you have on you. You'll see that the cutter currently has no ammo. We've seen this used before to mine iron from a node in the world. It's unmoddable and seemingly isn't the best tool for combat with only 4 energy damage. Here we see a magnetic rifle called the Mag Shear. Seems like it has low damage, but as we see soon, these gun types have other properties and this one specifically has a super fast fire rate. If you want high damage, this modified calibrated Razorback might be the way to go. 7.5mm rounds, decent range being double that of the Refined Eon and Advanced Grendel, and it is more accurate. You'll notice that it has two mods on it, the Recon Scope and the Compensator, the Compensator adding to range and the Scope adding to accuracy. The modified Calibrator Tombstone uses 11mm rounds, has good stats across the board, and has been modified with a longer barrel, iron sights, and a large magazine, all of which are shown on the weapon. So modding a weapon won't just provide invisible stat upgrades. You'll also notice that calibrating a gun will improve its stats. Here we see some more weapons, including named weapons and different rarities, suggesting there are unique weapons and legendary items in the world to find, ones with special affixes that do interesting things. Here's the Brawler's Equinox, a rarer laser rifle that does the standard Equinox laser rifle things, like fire with recoil. Yes, I mentioned this in another video as a joke, and many of you hit me up in the comments saying it was a rail gun. Well, I've seen what your gun can do. Not impressed. I'm going to ignore that and focus on this weird laser with recoil. Did I miss a physics lesson? Here it is, a laser rifle. It comes with the ability bashing, which makes it deal double damage when bashing. These affixes are probably randomly generated and then change the name of the item. There are some more weapons showcased like the coachman and the drumbeat, 
But I want you to look at this little angry cricket called Ember. It will ignite targets. Now let's look at one of the named rifles, Eternity's Gate. It's a particle beam weapon dealing physical and energy damage and requiring heavy fuses to fire. Seeing as the player has 1,238 rounds, perhaps they won't be mini nuke levels of hard to come by. It has volatile rounds that pack a bigger punch, but aren't as stable and can fail. The next named is Experiment A7, a shotgun that deals 30% extra damage against aliens. There are a ton of weapon types in the game, as we can see, from grenade launchers to rifles, all able to be modded. Now, I'll go through modding a little more soon, but what if you're getting shot at? Your spacesuits can help you there. The starting Constellation spacesuit providing little protection, only 78 physical resistance, denoted by the DR stat for quick reference. Then you have protection against energy weapons and electromagnetic, and resistances to thermal, airborne, corrosive, and radiation damage. Static resistances are all this suit provides. All four of these suits simply providing different amounts, with the mercenary spacesuit seemingly the best for a higher mass cost. Helmets provide resistance stats as well, be it not much. Here we see a legendary helmet. It provides resistances, but also has three affixes or abilities, if you will. Minus 15% damage from robot enemies, plus two max auto attempts can be banked while hacking, and a 10% chance to ignite nearby attackers. No doubt loot hunting will be a real reason to eliminate enemies. Now, it wouldn't be a Bethesda game without a ton of food options. This Midnight Delight is different from its afternoon version as it restores health, five to be exact. But do note, food has a mass and that means you'll have a max amount you can carry. You'll notice that med packs have no weight and the player has favorited them for quick access. Instead of alcohol restoring stamina and providing a debuff to compensate, we have orange juice in a box. It lowers your health by one for a minute in order to give you plus 802 for five minutes. O2 being your stamina, letting you sprint for longer. The patty melt a more complex dish, restoring 15 health. Synth the meat steak, restoring three. Simple toast, restoring three as well. Maybe you can put the toast and the meat together to cook the patty melt, for example. Speaking of cooking, Trillo Bites are a dish created from alien meat, and you can start your background as a chef, so it makes sense. There are plenty of options to keep yourself protected and healthy in combat. Now, I mentioned mods, but let's dive a little deeper. You can research mods in the research laboratory. In this case, we research barrel mods too in the weaponry tab. Researching takes materials you find, mine, or refine. More on this in my crew and settlement video, but here we see a modified drum beat rifle. We can see it already has a muzzle brake on it, but we have the option of modifying its receiver, internals, optics, magazine, and battery, and muzzle. Out of the gate, it already has a full auto receiver, iron sights, and a drum magazine. You can opt to change these. For example, you can swap out the drum magazine, which has a high capacity for armor piercing rounds. To make this mod, you need three tungsten, two adhesive, and four lead, as well as the magazine and battery mods to research. It makes your weapon hit harder and pierce armor, obviously. A medium mag provides a smaller magazine, but at a lower mass. Also, it doesn't need particular research to build. Explosive rounds, which I'm sure will be a fan favorite, requires adhesive, tetrafluorides, and lead, as well as the research. The rounds explode with contact and deal hugely increased damage. For example, the armor piercing rounds increase damage by 0.8, and this increases it by 6.8. Let's see it in action against a Varun robot Model S, which is a cheaper version than the Model X. As you can see, as the bullets hit the target, there are little explosions, no doubt hurting close enemies next to the target, but not piercing tough defenses as effectively as the armor piercing rounds. If you choose the stealth route, it's almost gonna be a requirement to put a suppressor on your weapon, as firing normally will alert enemies to your presence. Suppressors will keep the noise down, but will also no doubt add damage to stealth attacks. In this case, this sneak attack did 2.1 times damage, and you remain hidden to follow up with another assassination. Then as a bonus, you're getting both stealth and pistol skill experience. But guns aren't your only route, you can use melee weapons. Here we see a bunch of them, and unlike guns, they only have a damage range, type, and mass. Here we have examples of some melee combat. You can see this coral bug scavenger attacking the player, but the player defending themselves with a block from the combat knife. Given the attack speed of this weapon, 
It does decent damage to the creature and staggers it. Sprinting into melee range against this epileptic, oh my god, e ecliptic, the player stabs an enemy with a machete, finishing it off easily. You'll notice that the attack was charged or heavy, as it consumes your O2 to do so. This essentially is a stamina bar represented by O2 draining and CO2 filling to compensate. You don't actually have limited oxygen, as that would be a frustrating mechanic to deal with. As the ecliptic dies, he regrets not whipping out his equipped Grendel and doing something about it. In the next scene, we see a third person axe party against a maggot moor, and the players holding their own with just a melee weapon. But they don't have to be on their own. You can bring companions along to combat. Vasco, your trusted robot pal, is one of them. He seems to have an inbuilt energy minigun on his chest and he's fully able to throw hands as well. There will be skills enhancing your companion's effectiveness in combat, so you can go full charisma style builds if you want. But what you may not have seen coming is the final option I'm going to cover. The most mysterious. It seems like the player will be able to eventually, after completing some story, muster some unknown power to use against enemies. By putting his hands up, all gravity is lost and the enemies float there helpless as if under some kind of spell. It's almost Jedi-like. Starfield can't be completely grounded in realism. There is some alien artifacts to discover and new powers to earn. Combat deserved as many options as possible and it seems we have that magic route as well. So the combat is there to play with and experiment. Let's show some more. Here we see the player throwing some grenades, but if you slow it down, you'll see these are very different looking explosive devices. In a snap aim and fire, he takes out this space of punk and throws a grenade to finish off his friends. It hits an explosive barrel, so the results are a little more 4th of July. You can interact with your environment as you expect. Here we see the player shooting a tank of what we can assume is liquid nitrogen, which promptly freezes this Varun zealot, letting the player unload into him his friends getting a similar treatment. Here's an example of an electromagnetic heavy weapon. You can see each barrel's targeting laser over the enemies. It has a huge magazine capacity and fire rate that fills the screen. These spaces didn't have a chance, especially when one's body is blown around and his vulnerable jump pack is struck, blowing them both up. Mag weapons are high-powered electromagnetic induction ballistic arrays. That's a mouthful, but basically each barrel has its own targeting laser and can put out a lot of damage. Here we see that heavy weapon again. Yes, it was a mag weapon. The player follows it up with a cold landmine against this robot Model S. The Model S is often needing advanced cooling methods. The heavy mag gun making quick work of the enemy, which seemed like it would be quite tough otherwise. This player is taking the non-direct and complete opposite approach, sniping from prone. One headshot with this sneak attack bonus is enough to take the target out. Note that the player has a yellow bar covering some of their health. Is this a bit of extra health? Is this armor? Or maybe an effect like Rad's from the Fallout series? Here we see an example of a particle beam weapon dealing both physical and energy based damage. Utilizing jump packs while the gravity is low can make you feel like you can fly. Here we can see that in effect as the player fires an explosive round modded shotgun. The spacers don't have a chance as the explosions are more than enough to kill them. Here is some more aerial combat, but one of these ecliptics has an infrared kind of effect over them. Was it a debuff you placed on him or maybe from a scan? Could it be the result of one of your mysterious powers? Here we see how in zero G environments, ballistic weapons will push you backwards. Maybe a fun way to get around quickly, just turn around and fire. If the amount of ammo you get is reflective of these previews, it very well may be the case that this is the fastest way to travel in some environments. Expect reverse firing done in speedruns. Though, if you have an energy weapon, it won't push you back at all, even though this is an equinox and still has recoil when you fire it in your hands for some reason. Here we see the player uppercutting a flocking shroomhead grazer. The assumption is the player is a psychopath because the equivalent is punching a cow. You'll notice the electromagnetic bar was full, but after the punch, it was lowered, further suggesting the damage type has some kind of negative effect when unfilled. If nothing has spoken to you yet, perhaps you'd enjoy a good old heavy minigun, which may be necessary against this level 75 hunting maggot maw, as a giant explosion from the gas tank only deals half of its life. Or maybe you like something smaller and more modified, like this pistol. The player throws a grenade which detonates on impact with this pirate, 
dealing a lot of damage and showing a different explosive style than we've seen before. The player then switches using the favorite bar to a shoddy called the Calibrated Pacifier. Here we see some more third person combat with their rifle. It also showed that headshots aren't guaranteed crits, confirming crits are their own mechanic. Here we see players shooting, rather ineffectively, a hunting twist fin. Perhaps he should have invested in Xeno sociology because that bash didn't do anything besides piss it off. Here we see that enemies can come at you with melee weapons too. This ecliptic choosing a rescue axe instead of a bullet. It's okay, you can give him and his friends some to share. In the next clip, you're wielding a sword and the smartest thing for your pistol wielding enemy to do is to charge at you. It's okay, you're gonna one up his stupid and throw a landmine at him instead of stabbing him in the throat. It does freeze the bugger though, allowing you to cut him up for future consumption. This hurting spider wasp grazer likes being tickled. You first get through its armor, then most likely get a nice big hug. Here's a demo of another modified weapon. However, this shot does give us clarity in how health and armor works. If they have armor, like this enemy, you need to burn through the whole white bar once for each pip. So the spacer has three, you need to burn through three white bars, essentially giving him triple health if you have nothing that pierces through it. This gun doesn't seem incredibly effective, so when the spacer's mate throws you a horribly aimed present, you charge over there, switch to a knife, and stab him right good in the guts. Works well, but I hope they use the hot swap more often in real combat. In this scene, we see the nade critting on its target, instantly killing. The player then uses a mag gun to blow away a space of punk, his captain, and another punk who was damaged by some of the previous rounds. Here we see a Yarun robot model A's. I'm sure the gun the player has is good, but it doesn't even scratch the robot, only lowering the electro mag bar and dealing no or next to no damage. Here's some more punks being blown away. The player no scoping a spacer, then scoping his mate. And in Bethesda fashion, they double down on the backpack explosions and send this pirate into orbit. Reminds me of the first time I came across a giant in Skyrim. So let's show a full sequence of combat. The player arrives at the abandoned mine. There'll be many filled areas like this randomly generated in places and plants for you to explore that may kick off some missions or quests. You see the player utilizing cover, but the AI doesn't seem all that intelligent. Maybe it's the type of enemy or the level they're at, but good enemy AI is not something you play an RPG for. After the area is cleared, it's time to loot. Bethesda loves you being able to pick up everything you can see, so you can pick up ammo on the table, as well as the hydraulic clamp and a cola pack. So this is the last combat area I want to show you. We're approaching the deserted robotics lab on Wakashi, and it's anything but deserted. You open the door to the science lab and enter the facility, and pirates are ready to receive your bullets. They don't seem all that difficult to dispatch, though one enemy with armor gives the player trouble, so they switch to a shotgun and make quick work of it. A freebooter tries to run away, but the player bashes him in the back of the head in a brutal ammo is precious move. We also see that the crate has a legendary item, the incendiary calibrated deep mining space helmet that we showed before. It's the final reward for making your way through the deserted robotics lab. So that's everything combat mods and weapons that we know so far. What did you think? You pumped for Starfield? Let me know below and what build you want to be running. Commenting will put you in the running for a 3080. I've upgraded to a 4090 recently, so why not give away my 3080? Second and third place will win a copy of the game. To enter, simply subscribe, like and comment this video and do so for future Starfield videos. For more entries, you can also jump on my Twitter and Discord. Winners will be randomly chosen using RNG on the 4th of September. So the more entries, the better the odds. Good luck and thank you so much for watching. I'll be exhaustively covering Starfielding up to and after release. I put a lot of effort into these videos, so be sure to keep your eyes open for more. And if you like this, be sure to check out my other breakdowns. Until next time, ciao friends.